talk about a Jurassic artifact. But that doesn't concern me. Today, I'm digging for the truth about Jurassic Park. Can you make DIY dinosaurs in a lab? This is an Argentinosaurus. Well, a model of one anyway. It would be really cool to see a big guy like this lumbering down the freeway, right? Well, I don't know about you, but I wouldn't want a 40-foot long carnivore with teeth the size of a banana following me. Meet Janet Yamaguchi, zoologist and VP of Education at the Discovery Science Center in Santa Ana, California. It boasts an impressive array of dino bones and artifacts, not to mention a nice view of all those fossil fuels powering the cars on the freeway next door. How long has the excavation and the study of, of dinosaur bones been happening? Only since the 1800s. It's a fairly young science. So what kind of stuff have we found since we've started this? We found bones, teeth, footprints, skin prints, and coprolites, which is fossilized poop. Coprolites, is that what you call it? That's a scientific term? Yes. I bet you those are pretty big specimens. Now, there are two places in the world that you can find fossilized amber, right? Yes, you tend to find it in the Baltic region and in the Dominican Republic. And in the movie, they were looking in the Dominican Republic. That's right, that's what it appears. Okay. Okay, so on the Goldblum scale of mathematical probability, it seems like the film's creators did their research. Or did they? The uh, mosquitoes are only about 50 million years old, whereas dinosaurs died out 65 million years ago. That's a 15 million year gap. Small matter of 15 million years. OK, so what you're saying is, is that the mosquitoes in the Dominican Republic that would be fossilized in amber weren't even living at the same time as the dinosaurs. That's correct. Uh-oh, the science of Jurassic Park is starting to look like a yabba dabba don't. Okay, but let's say for the sake of my theoretical pet dino, that mosquitoes and velociraptors did coexist. So the problem is that DNA is actually quite a fragile molecule. It's very susceptible to chemical degradation, and over time it just loses its code or its information, even if it's preserved in amber. So no skeeters, and at best, fuzzy, falling apart DNA. Hmm. These dinos are looking like bogus sauruses. A human strand of DNA would have three billion base pairs. Billion with a B. Billion with a B. But they're only 50 trillionths of an inch wide. So in Jenga terms, our model would actually go on and on and on. Well, if you take out one component of a DNA strand, are you completely changing the, the life form? Absolutely. So. For example, with a chimpanzee, there's only 2% of our, our genetic makeup is different. And we're quite different animals. We're quite different animals. OK. If I take out just one piece, I broke my dino Jenga. But in the movie, they plug up those DNA holes with frog DNA. Where'd that molecular microbiologist go? Even if you somehow managed to obtain huge amounts of dinosaur DNA, you would still have some holes you needed to patch. And no halfway decent biologist would use frog DNA. Dinosaurs are much more closely related to birds or even crocodiles, but even these modern day relatives are probably far too distant to do the job properly. Because the thing is, even having a little bit of DNA that's different can have a huge effect. So our little lab experiment would croak with that frog DNA. What about the painstakingly reconstructed dino-friendly environment they claim to have created? Some animals are very specific about what they eat. For example, pandas primarily eat bamboo. What would a triceratops eat? And we don't even know. We don't even know. So it'd be just like, <laughs> let's take them the sizzler for the all you can eat on Tuesday. No, that's not going to work. <laughs> well, I imagine the air was a lot cleaner back then. Well, I don't know about cleaner, but it was different. We don't really know what the particulate matter was in the air, what amount of dust there might have been or the chemicals that were in the air. We do know they're different today, though, and those could affect this animal in a bad way. And totally compromise the immune system, essentially. That's true. Even if we did clone a dinosaur, and even if we did find you know, the right food for it to eat, the air quality and the other qualities of the environment just might not be suitable for dino life. That's true. In other words, T-Rex and his friends, they're history. And they're going to stay that way. All right, so it looks like the only way I'm ever going to see any dinosaur action is if I rent Jurassic Park. Because if I hold my breath waiting for a clone version, I'll end up like that guy. <laughs>